Hello, my friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop, getting ready to start on a huge project. This one will separate the men from the boys. What are you, a man or a mouse? Squeak up. Oh my goodness. I really am not wanting to start on this. This belongs to my good buddy, Leon Pruitt. It's an HD 18 Martin guitar. I don't know the year of this. I'm going to say the vintage is in the 80s. Um, might be 70s. I didn't look it up or anything, but it's in that rough era there where Martin had some issues with their guitars. Some, some of the Martins at that time had the bridges just slightly off on the intonation. This is one of those. We moved the bridge back about 15 years ago. I don't know, we moved it back almost an eighth inch uh, to, get the, to get it to properly intonate. Before that, if you put a capo on it, every time you would do that, you would have to retune it. That fixed that problem. Well, now you fast forward now to now, and that's like 15 years later, and now it's got other problems. The neck is it's just high. It's, it's just bad enough that it really does need to be fixed. Typically, when you look down this flat plane, the top of this fretboard should just about be even with this, or just barely above this, maybe like an eighth inch. Well, this is above this by about three-eighths of an inch. And when they're that high, you can't hardly set them up to play well. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing about right here, below the fretboard here, is where I'm seeing level with this. So that's pretty high. Okay, that's problem number one. Problem number two is the bridge is also now cracked across the holes. So I looked inside and problem number three is the bridge plate is a mess. The bridge plate is cracked and it's uh, chipped out and got little chunks missing and it's a piece of maple which is okay for a bridge plate, but it could be better if it was a rosewood or something like that. So, we got three big things to do. Uh, we got to put in a new bridge plate, we got to put on a new bridge, and we got to reset the neck. Oh my gosh, I'd rather be punched in the face. And the fact that it is Leon Pruitt, who is one of my best friends in the whole world, that increases the pucker factor a whole bunch. <laughs> it really does. Oh my gosh. So I've already done, this is cold right now, this is my heater. But anyway, I've done some dry testing. Let's put the camera down here to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I can get this in here. Now, while it's cold, it's much easier because I don't have to worry about burning myself. But. After it's really hot, I'm not 100% sure I can get it in there. There it is, and it's I can tell it's touching the bridge pad because I can see the silver of it through these holes. And what I'm thinking of is trying to get it in there and heat that bridge pad up to get a lot of heat in the bridge pad and then try to pull the bridge pad off. Um, will that work? I don't know. Never tried it from the inside before, and I'm worried about burning myself because this thing gets crazy hot. But I think that's the best way to approach it since, you know, I think I need to take the bridge pad out first before I take this bridge off. But either way, it's a problem because you don't have anything to pry against. Once you take one off, then, you, then you're kind of hurting on the other. But they both need to come off. So what I might do, I might do, is I might take that bridge pad off first, put a new bridge pad on it, and get that glued in place to strengthen the top back up, and then take this off. And I think that's the order of operations that I'm going to go with. It's not exactly what I want to do, but it's what I think I have to do. The temperature on this is up to 365 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to a 420 as my max. I'm going to try to get this in here and not burn myself or anything else and try to get it up in there. Uh, I'm a little bit worried about it, I'll be truthful. 
Um, there it is. It's in place. You can see some smoke coming out because it's it's hot. And I'm worried I'm going to burn myself. I'll be honest with you. There it is. It's it's right on the bridge pad now. I really want to heat the bridge pad from the inside because those pads are hard to heat through this bridge. I've got my tool here. This is a Stumac bridge plate removal tool. I'm just hoping that I can heat it hot enough here to do something to get it off. I'm going to hold it there for a little while. I can feel quite a bit of heat coming through here now. So I'm going to try that and see if that'll work. Um, I've got to get in there pretty quick. No, not much in this, not much is happening, I don't think. And it's really hard to get these off. And and if you if you take the bridge off first, it's even worse because you'll bust your top trying to get that bridge plate out. Ask me how I know that. My control box just hit the ground. That wasn't good, but it doesn't look like it's any damage. I've got it in there as good as I can get it in there, and I'm holding it on there. I've got to really get it hot. I know that. And I'm going to probably heat this tool up, too. And that's another problem, because you get in there and you touch this, and you burn yourself with this, too. Yeah, this is really getting hot. I'm hoping it's going to get hot enough to soften that glue. I'm going to I'm going to heat up my this tool now too. See if it'll get hot enough to help it a little bit more. It's really hard to do this. This is one of the hardest things you'll ever try to do on a guitar. Uh, it's not doing anything that I can feel. It really does need to come out of there. Number one, it's bowed. Number two, it's broken. Number three, it's got chips out of it all over the place, and it's uh, maple to boot. And maple's not the best sound anyway, so we could kill about three birds with one stone by getting that out of there. I think what I'm going to try to do then is I'm going to heat this up first. This will hold heat for a while, this steel will. Get it pretty hot. I'll try to go back in there again. Boy, it's hard to get in place. I can't really think of anything tougher than taking a bridge pad out of a guitar. That's about the hardest thing I know how to do. I've had a few that come out fairly easy, but only a few. Most of them are really hard, and this one seems like it's going to be exceptionally hard. And of course, that's the way it would be since it's my buddy's guitar, and uh, I'm already nervous about doing it. It's smoking pretty good, so I know it's pretty hot. Just got to do what I got to do. See if I can get in there and get it to budge a little bit. You really think you'd have more room to pull, but your arm hits against this. It's really hard to pull. I wish I had another way of getting those things out. I wish there was some way you could get to it where you could just chisel it out of there or something or plane it out of there. Well, I'll try the traditional way here and see if it makes any difference. I'll just put the heat in from the top side. Don't think that's going to really get it hot enough either. But it's easier on me. I don't have to strain to hold it. You know, I can just let it sit there. On the inside, it's really straining my wrists and hands to hold that. I think I'm going to pull this saddle out. That'll help me get it in there better. I'm trying to see if I can feel the heat coming through this way. I mean, it's still a little bit warm, but it's not what I would call hot. And unless it's hot, it's not, I just don't think it's going to work. I'm not worried about burning this bridge because it's going to be replaced too. I'm trying to optimize it as much as possible. Get the heat in that thing. It's really hard to hold this up there. You'd be surprised what the strain is on your wrist here and your hand, especially with big hands. My hands are too big to fit in there very good and my wrist is really hurting against the sound hole. 
right, while that's hot, I'll put the put this on here, heat up the tool, and hopefully retain some heat on the other part in there while I'm heating up this tool. The hotter this tool is, the better too. It'll just help peel the glue a little bit. But quite honestly, I'm not expecting anything. You can't, you just can't get leverage on it. That's the biggest problem. If you could really just get some good leverage on it, it would probably come off. I can't, I can't get to it. Just can't, just can't get a grip on it. I'm gonna have to do some more serious thinking about this. Well, my friends, I've tried something else. I've got my heater clamped inside there, and that way I don't have to strain and try to hold it, and I can let it stay on there a little longer. Maybe it'll really soften the glue if I let it really get hot. Just have to wait and see. Well, I've had it on there a couple of minutes now, and uh, it's been tight for a while now, so this is pretty hot. I mean, it's, you can still keep your hand on it, but it's pretty hot. This is the first time I've ever tried this, so I don't want to go too crazy long, but I've had it on there a pretty good, pretty good amount of time. So I'm gonna take it back out of there now, turn it up this way, and heat this up a little bit. I'm gonna reach in and see what happens. I hope something changes. I doubt it, but I can't get it. I don't know what to do. Have to do some more thinking. Well, my friends, for you it's only been a few seconds, I know that, but for me it's been about a week since I worked on this old Martin guitar. And uh, I've got my hand up inside it right now with a wet paper towel. Anyway, I'm wetting down that bridge plate like this and I just keep rubbing it and wetting it down. I've got my bridge removal tool heating up here. So I'm gonna get it up to about 400 degrees and try it on that bridge plate and see what happens. I don't know if wetting it down will help me at all, but I figure at this point, since this doesn't wanna come off, it can't hurt. I've got her pretty soaked down. So I'm hoping that maybe soaking it down like that will shock it when I put the heat on it and maybe turn the glue loose. I'm also grabbing in there with this tool while it's wet to see if I can get it to do anything. Does not feel like it wants to do anything. It feels really tight. Keep soaking it down until the thing gets up to temperature. It's up over 300. It's 328 right now. That's Fahrenheit. We'll just see. You never know. It might make a difference. Nothing's worked so far, so nothing ventured, nothing gained. I really want to get the bridge plate off before I loosen up this bridge and the reason is that gives me something to pry against and then if I can get a new bridge plate on there, a good bridge plate, then I can take this off a lot easier. Alright, we're up to our temperature now so I'm going to poke this hot thing in here and see if I can get that bridge plate heated up without burning and scalding myself. You can hear it steaming already. It's steaming out of there because it's making the bridge on top even a little bit wet. Well, I'm heating it up. I just don't know if it'll do any good. This is the first time I've ever seen this drop. It's dropped all the way down and it's going fast down. I don't get it. It doesn't make sense. Something's not right. I don't know what it is, but something's not right. Well, that went back up to 495 now, so something's definitely off on this. Seems like any time you need to rely on something, that's when you get trouble. I actually feel like I might be gaining some ground. I think I am. Yeah, the tool's actually sticking up in there because it's up in the 
proper place. I didn't really think it would make that much difference, but it made a pretty darn big difference. Well, I thought it did. Now that I'm in there, I don't feel it. You sure can't tell it by looking in there. I really thought it had made some good progress. I'm gonna get back in there and wet it down some more. It sure felt like it was doing something. Maybe it's doing more and it just sprung back. I don't know. All I know is I'm gonna wet it down really good one more time. Try heating it up one more time. Hoping it'll do something, because it sure has been a pain so far. Let me take this back in there and see if it'll pull now. Yeah, it is. It's definitely coming. I can see the tool in there now. Yeah, we've got her now. We're, we're in the home stretch. I'm gonna leave the tool in there and take a look and just see how much better it looks that way. Yep, it's definitely coming. Well, there's a lesson for you. If you can get, if you have one that's really, really bad, soak it down like that, put the heat to it, and uh, made a huge difference on this one. Because I wasn't getting any progress at all. And I seriously mean none. And even now, it's still very tough, don't get me wrong. But it made a huge difference. I can actually see the blade coming through the holes, so I know it's gone, it's done that much at least. I think I'm gonna wet it down yet again because that seems to be the only thing that's helping. In fact, I might try heating this tool up and then sticking the tool in there. Well, I'm gonna keep working on that. You're seeing, you see what I'm doing and I'll let you know if I make any progress. Well, my friends, I've spent another 10 minutes monkeying with this. I've got the front half off clean. It's just from this area about, about that much, just from the front of these holes here to the front edge here. That's about how much of a strip I have left. And I've wet it down again. I'm going back in and just trying to get off that front strip now. Amazingly, it's actually coming off very clean on the inside. It's, it doesn't look like it's damaged the top at all. And I'm thankful of that. Well, it's obviously gonna take me quite a while longer. Well, I made some significant progress just in the last second there, just before I turned the camera on. I made myself a tool. I had made this a long time ago, but I just modified it again. And I think it's actually working. I've got the mirror in there where I can actually see what I'm doing on top of that, which helps. All right, so there's my tool. It reaches up behind that brace and I can, very sharp, I can push on it on from the other side, where in the past I could only pull so here's, I know I knocked out a big chunk just now, so I'll pull it out of there, or try to anyway. Doesn't look too bad. It did rip the spruce a little bit, you can see right there. You know, such are the pains of doing this kind of thing. You're, you're breaking it, you're not. There's no zipper, you've got to get it out of there somehow. And that, and that really depends on which way the grain is growing. That's on this side, and the grain is probably growing the wrong way. That's why it ripped pushing this way. I'll try it on this other side now and see if I can get it to come out. I have a feeling it'll do a little bit better. Maybe not a lot better. It just doesn't want to cooperate. You can't hardly get that in there where you want it because the braces are in the way and, and the 
you can't see with the mirror as well as you think you can. Well, at least I've got three-fourths of it out now. So I've got one-fourth to go. Well, I've taken a lot of bridge pads out of instruments and I've never struggled this much with one. There's still a quarter quarter of it over here on this area and it does not want to come loose. I have soaked it down, heated it, heated up the tool, tried to hit it from the front. It don't want nothing. It just says forget it, I ain't coming out. Uh, I'm about wore out for today because I've been trying for about an hour now and uh, I've you know pushed on my hands so much that my hands are sore and even got little blisters so it's just not not fun well if uh, Yogi Barrow was here he would uh, describe this as a crudely delicate operation <sighs> Yeah, it's kind of like that. It's very crude in one hand because you're basically breaking it. On the other hand, it's crazy delicate because you don't want to break anything else and you don't want to break the top. So it's, you know, you've heard me say simple but complicated. The idea and the technique is fairly simple. But getting it out of here is doggone complicated by the time you get it done. I went and sharpened this tool up a lot more. Used a diamond hone on it. It's very sharp. I also rounded off the edges of this tool because they were really blistering my hands and hurting my hands really bad. It wouldn't hurt if they were rounded off some more and I might get the Dremel tool out with a grinder and round it off some more for future use. I really still have got that last quarter to go and I keep soaking it down and it just says nope ain't happening uh, I really don't know what else to do it's just nuts that that little piece there has to be the problem uh, you know me I will win eventually well my friends it's the next day and I took a whole bunch of these calls that I have that are pre-cut that I use up inside the instruments. And I'm just checking the fit. And this one that I have in there fits it really well. I've looked inside with the mirror, the lighted mirror, um, at, least in, at least in terms of the angle. And that's mainly what I'm worried, you know, concerned about is the angle like this. So this fits it really well. Now it's a little long this way, but uh, you know, I can cut it off somewhere in here and uh, you know, put a bridge uh, pad up in there that'll really be good and strong. And that's what we need here because the whole area is pooched up a little bit. It's been repaired once before, so I just want to make sure that we get as much strength in there as we can. But anyway, the angle of this looks really good, so this part here fits it just perfect. And we'll just cut it off about here. And when I say cut it off there, what I mean is I'll use this for my pattern of the new bridge pad I'm going to make, and we, but we will cut it off shorter than this. So I've slid this down a little bit this way on this piece of paduk. This piece of paduk is just a tiny bit thicker than the old bridge pad. And by the time I sand it down, it should be just about perfect. So that looks good. Nice quarter sawn piece of paduk. Should really make it uh, strong and really produce a good sound on top of that. Well, I got this piece of paduk planed down to about 106 thousandths, which is really pretty good. I'm going to set it in there, and then, and it's all dry, of course. And I'm going to put it in place the best I can, and put the little clamp on it here just to uh, kind of make sure that it's going to work. And I don't guess I did that very well. Put that in from the wrong side there. There it is. Now it's going to get up in there. Yeah, this clamp's going to have to go a long way to clamp that up, but that's okay. I just, 
I just want to hold it temporarily where I can look in there with the mirror. And I don't want to use two-way tape. That's too big a hassle. This is actually fairly quick, even though it looks cumbersome. Should be held in place good enough to take a look at it with the mirrored light here. And I'm mainly just looking for fit and make sure it's not being held up at any point or any place. Yeah, that looks looks real good. It looks like it matches and fits the braces absolutely perfectly. There doesn't look like there's any air gap in it that I can see. So that's just really very perfect. I'm very pleased with that fit. So that'll that'll strengthen that area a lot. And might as well just go ahead and loosen that up enough to get it off of there. And then I need to uh, double check in here and about all the little pieces of wood that are loose and there's really not much. I think it's going to be just fine. There's a little bit of dampness to it yet because I was working on it just a short time ago. And so I think I'll just let it dry out a little bit more first before I go ahead and get the glue in there and everything and get this put up in there. So I'll give it a little rest here, maybe 10 or 15 more minutes, let it dry a little bit more. And then we'll start putting the glue in there and setting this up. Okay, I took a heat gun and put it in here. It feels nice and warm in here now, and uh, it helped dry that little spot up. It was just in this one little spot right here is where it was still damp. I feel like all the little fibers are pushed up in where they need to be and all of that, and uh, what I think I'm gonna do is put the glue on this really good, put, press it up in there, maybe even press it with the call and take it right back out, and, um, then look in there and make sure the glue's getting good coverage and all that because you only get one shot at this and I want to make sure it's the right shot. So I'll show you what that looks like when I get to that. I've got the uh, glued up bridge pad in there and I've got it stuck up in there just temporarily. Uh, I'm pulling it back and sticking it back in there again, just pumping it back and forth. I want to look inside there now and see how much the glue has transferred. And uh, that's real important at this stage. I want to make sure I'm getting good glue coverage. And uh, it looks pretty good, but there's places there that's not getting that much coverage. Um, I have a feeling it's going to be just fine, but I'm going to squirt a little more glue on here. I think it's, I think it's just the malformation of the top is making it not, because this is nice and flat and the top is bowed a little bit. So I'm just going to put a little more glue on here. Once I get this heavy call on here, it'll, I think it'll all go together just, just fine. I think I'll stick this in first, get her stuck in place, and then put the call on it. I'm going to take a damp cloth and wipe around in there, make sure I don't have any glue on the surface of the bridge pad itself because I'm gonna put that call in there and I don't want the call to stick to it. Let me double check by looking in there, make sure it looks clean. Yeah, it looks real nice, it looks good. It's right in the place it should be. So now I'll put this call in here and we should start getting the clamps on it and it should be good to go. Got it held in place. I'm going to just tighten it down temporarily like this while I look at it and then I'll get the other parts and put it all together. Yeah, that looks pretty good, but I think the call slipped just a little bit. The bridge pad itself looks fine. I think I can move the call forward towards the front of the guitar just a hair. No, maybe not. It's pretty close. Okay, well, I just got to get the other parts, get them on here real quick. Again, I, in case you're wondering, I wanted to get the bridge pad in there and get the whole top firmed up before I take the, the bridge itself off. Because then I'll have something to keep the top 
more secure, more you know, more uh, stationary, more rigid, so it doesn't flex and crack when I take the bridge off. I'll get the other clamps on there and show you what it looks like in just a minute. Well, I've got the uh, call in there. I've got these all clamped down pretty tight. I always like to clamp down the center ones really tight first, and then you go ahead and you squeeze these down a little bit. And that just spreads it out a little bit more. That should be fairly flat across there. I don't expect it to be perfectly flat, but it should have improved it. Yeah, there's just maybe, a, I don't know, less than an eighth of an inch. From what you know, like in other words, if I press down on one side, it's less it's less than an eighth of an inch right here, or almost an eighth of an inch. So, you know, it's that means it's less than a sixteenth on each side. That's not too bad. And maybe we'll get a little bit more out of that when we put the bridge on too. You just you never know. But anyway, I'd like to get that as flat as I can get it. Um, and then once we get the bridge on there, then we can Go to the other big project, resetting this neck. I'm not looking forward to that, I can tell you for sure. Well, the bridge plate has been drying and curing in this uh, Martin for about uh, four or five days now, maybe even a little longer. So that's, you know, I wanted to give it plenty of time to make sure it was firmly attached before I start taking this off because you have to pry here and that puts force on this top. You know, there's not really much you can do to avoid that. So I've got my bridge heater here and uh, I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to set this on here and let it start doing its thing. It's going to take it a while to, to heat up, but uh, I'll watch it carefully. We're up to full temperature now. That's 420 degrees that I have it set on. And technically it's a little hotter than that right now, but that's okay, it fluctuates a little bit. It's been sitting on the, the wood the whole time, so the wood has been gradually heating up and it should be up at that temperature. I'm gonna see what happens here. I'm gonna start on this end down here and I'll try to heat just that end up a little bit. I've got to be careful because I can burn the finish really bad here. Oh, that went in easy. That's good. Oh, that went easy. Oh, thank you, thank you. That's good. That's why I say tight bond, people always say tight bond comes, is too hard to take apart. Well, in my opinion, tight bond is one of the easiest to take apart, yet it's one of the strongest bonds you'll ever run into on wood. Uh, getting a little hard right there, but otherwise it's pretty easy so far. I'm also cleaning off the glue and junk off there with sandpaper, which always helps too. You don't want anything dragging on this as it goes in there. Well, this side's a lot harder for some reason, wouldn't you know? Wow, oh, way harder. That would be the mystery of life, is why would one end be much harder than the other? Couldn't answer that one. I'm heating it up just that specific end and maybe that'll help. Oh my gosh, it's way harder. I don't like to go from the other side, but I think I'm gonna have to. Well, that's weird because now it's hard on this end, on the front end. Oh my gosh. Oh, I feel like it's splitting because it's not coming off. That's not good. It may create some damage. I don't want the damage, but you know, you, sometimes you get what you get. We'll just have to fix whatever happens. Not great, but not, not terrible considering how it could be. I can clean that up and fix that up and I think we'll be fine. That's a little bit ugly, but it's the second time it came off too, so you could kind of expect that a little bit. Not too bad though. Since the iron is hot and we've got to remove this anyway, 
I'm going to start letting this heat up and maybe we'll just get lucky and get this loose yet today too. I got the uh, knife real clean again by sanding it. That makes a difference on how well it slides. The glue gets on there and it sticks and it's really hard to get in and out so I always keep the glue off if I can. We're pretty far under there now. I'm going to let it heat some more and then I'm going to get the glue off there while I can. We're under there about as far as we can go with the end of the knife. Okay, I'm going to try to go in from the edge. Put this in down here and kind of that just more or less gives me a little extra leverage helps pry up when as I start trying to slide in here heat this up and see how far under there I can get this to go might help a little I'm hitting something in the middle there there I got over it I think Unfortunately, it's making a little problem on the finish there. I'm hoping we can touch that up, but I'm hoping we got it loose enough there that it'll work. Better stop while I'm ahead. I'm going to try to pull this fret out of here and see what we can do about hitting that hole. So I've got the bit here and I'm going to try to I'm going to angle it in and try to hit that pocket. I think we hit it. That's good. Yep, I think we hit it. I think we hit it both times. So that's excellent. That's good. Very, very good. And I've got my little uh, needle valve from filling up, uh, you know, this is for like basketballs or footballs or whatever. And I've got that in there and it fits that hole real easy. People will probably ask why I'm not using Tim Tyler's device he made for me. And the only reason is, is it won't fit that hole. And this, this is wider than the frets, see? So I can't drill a hole big enough for this. Um, where this one's just barely coverable by the frets. Anyway, that's the reason. So this is, this is a much better made uh, device. It's just a little too large for my purposes for the most, most of the time. I've got uh, this heating up over there on my hot plate. I'll let you see it. There's, there's the rig. And you notice I've got this pointed kind of away from me. I don't like that pointed at me in case it blows off. Of course, it could blow steam back this direction too, even if it does blow off. The only time I've ever had a problem with this uh, blowing off was when this needle was clogged. And uh, I learned my lesson on that, and that was that the hole was too tight and it wasn't going anywhere. It was a, you know, an enclosed hole that I had this in. Well, now I've got, uh, this hole is definitely open, number one. And then number two, I also have the end of this off open too, so that the steam can get out in two places, not just one. So I'm going to go ahead and insert this back into the guitar. Hopefully we'll get some steam going here pretty soon. This hot plate is good and bad. It uh, doesn't get real, real hot. Um, it gets hot enough to, to get the steam going and then, and then it kind of shuts itself off. So that's kind of good that you don't build up too much pressure in here. It's kind of a safety device really, so in a way that's a good thing. I really don't need to insert this till I start seeing steam come out of this. And it will come out here in a minute. Well now you can see the steam kettle is way down there and uh, I've got it lower than this so that way the steam has to rise and that's a good thing. It should start rising here any minute. The kettle's pretty warm now. Show you what it looks like once the steam starts coming out. Well the steam just started coming out. You can 
hear it and see it both. It's even coming out this side here underneath there. So it's, you can tell that's not clogged that way. It's gonna take it a little while to make a difference. Try to contain that steam there so it doesn't get out on top of the guitar like it's doing. It's going to take quite a while before we really see any results. So I'll turn the camera off for a little while and let it catch up. We can tell that they're connected for sure the holes are because it's blowing out of both sides. So when it's going in here it's coming out there so that means this joint is getting good and saturated. I'm going to see if I can see any movement at all. I'm pretty sure I won't at this point. Well, actually, I think I am seeing just a tiny bit. That's a good thing. Yeah, if you can wiggle it like that, that lets that moisture get into the areas better. So I'm wiggling. I can't tell you that it's doing much good yet, but I'm definitely wiggling it. That's a good thing that it's actually got a little tiny bit of movement. I didn't expect any, so if you get a little bit, you're doing pretty good. It's actually steaming very well. We're definitely getting movement, and it's getting more and more, so that's good. That's really good. It isn't going to come out of there this this time, but that's okay. I, you know, as long as we're getting some movement, that, that's what I like to see. Because boy, that last one I did, I didn't get any movement for almost an hour. It's only been about 10 or 15 minutes on this one. I'm letting that steam pot just cool off. I'm looking on the inside, see if I see any steam coming out yet. And I don't see any anywhere on the inside, so that's a good sign. Hey, another thing I'm going to do is take this pin out of there just in case it could be interfering and I don't think it is because I believe I put that on there and I doubt it goes into anything more than just the heel itself but just to play it safe I'm going to take that off of there I'm sure it doesn't go anywhere but now we know it doesn't and I'm going to keep wiggling and monkeying with this for a while, and I'll show you if I make any progress. I wiggled it around some more off camera. I couldn't get it to do much more, uh, but it is wiggling. There's no question about that. And I uh, put this rig on here, and I had to extend it out. Uh, this Martin's just a little longer than the last guitar I had it on. There, You can see some old holes here where I... You know, I can move it back for a shorter area, but the Martin needs the longer one. And I've got everything tightened down pretty good. I'm hoping that when we get the steam going in here again and I start wiggling it again, that maybe we'll get a little action coming up with it. With this being tight, you know. I'm gonna turn these a little bit like this about every few minutes or so I'll turn it about that much just like less than a quarter turn and I'll just keep wiggling and pulling on this there we go we're getting a lot of movement now a lot of movement so I don't think it's gonna be long now I think we're good in fact I can turn those a little bit by hand now again that means it's coming out of there I'm real happy about that. You can see the wiggle there, it's getting. Oh my gosh, that's good. Yeah, it's coming out now. I can feel it, feel it coming out. Yep, yep, it's coming, it's loose. That was way easier than I anticipated and I'm so thankful. There you go. Now we can take this rig off, know that we, yeah, we're successful. I'm so happy that came loose like that. Because those things usually go real easy like that or really hard. <laughs> There's almost no in between. That one was easy. I'm, I'm surprised how easy it was. One of the easiest I've ever done, really. Look at there. 
how clean that is. Didn't even make a mark. <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. I love it. That looks perfect too. There's really nothing but glue in there and that's it. So we're gonna let this sit and dry for a few days or well at least a day, I mean a full day and then uh, we'll move on from there. <laughs>